All right, nobody else is gonna teach you this stuff, so I'm gonna tell you some of the secrets I learned from getting over 100 clients in my marketing agency. We're at the end of the year, 2022, and I learned a lot throughout this year, and so I wanted to kind of just distill it, boil it down, so that you understand what you can do moving forward. Now, this applies to beginners as well as really advanced people, like people that are already making $100,000 a month because these are kind of universal laws, and so if you're not using one of these, then you can kind of implement it and apply it. I have five main things, main points that I'm gonna go over. This video might be pretty long because there is a lot of content in here. Please stay till the end because I trust me, you will greatly appreciate it once you figure out some of these hidden strategies. So let's get started. All right, number one, the secret behind your offer. One of the number one things I see a lot of these agencies do, especially big ones, is that they don't even know what their offer is. Like there is no real reason that someone should be paying you rather than just paying the next guy. Now you can still get clients with this method and this strategy, but what I found is that if you have a different value proposition, then people will not compare you to the next guy and so they'll wanna buy from you because you're unique and you're different in some way. To do this, all you gotta do is know who you're targeting and know just what they want because if you know who you're targeting and know what they want it becomes easy for you to sell anything i am a terrible closer but i have an amazing guarantee and just a no-brainer offer so people just like they just want to move forward because it just makes sense to do so let me give you an example when i was starting i was doing solar and i was doing what everybody else was saying and just targeting the same type of people, the same type of clients doing the exact same thing, which was I was doing Facebook ads for solar companies, helping them get more solar installs. Now, when I would get on sales calls with these people, I had a lot of resistance, a lot of pushback because they didn't want to do ads again. Maybe they've done it in the past and they didn't want to do it again. And so that was kind of the main problem that I was facing. But on the calls, I heard them a lot saying that they liked the traditional methods of marketing. And so I started pitching my offer and changed it more towards, I'll help you build a canvassing team. Once I started pitching that, I had people calling me all the time saying, hey, how do we get a canvassing up and running? How do you do that? Then I would just sell them on the phone. I would just be like, yeah, how it works is we'll build a canvassing team. If you don't know what a canvassing team is, it's basically a door-to-door -door sales team. And so I said, we'll help you build out a canvassing team. It's, we'll, it'll consist of three people. If someone quits within the first four weeks, I will replace it with another person. We'll train them, we'll do everything. I had no clue what I was doing, but I understood what the market wanted and I changed the offer towards what they wanted and now I had zero resistance when I was selling. So I tell all my clients this, sell it before you fulfill it. So whether you're starting out or you already have an agency, when you're trying to sell a new offer, just don't plan it out. Don't try to build a website and do all this work on the back end and spend hours and hours and hours doing it just to realize that no one wants to buy your broccoli or no one wants to buy your underwater basket weaving classes. So you wasted all this time trying to sell something that no one really wanted when you could have just went out with the offer first, said, hey, does anybody want this? And everybody said, no, we don't want it. And then you can not waste your time on that and then change it and adjust it to something else. So when you're creating your offer, whether you're just starting out or you already have a, an established agency, always think of it as like a Kickstarter campaign. So what I'll do is I'll just, I've got like a lot of friends on Facebook, I'll just post on Facebook, hey, would anybody be interested in this? And I'll get like some posts, I'll get no comments, some posts I'll get 200 comments. And so with those posts, I know, okay, people actually want this offer, let me lean forward into this. Number two, Blue Ocean Strategy. If you haven't read the book, just read it. I see everyone in this space literally just following the coattail of their favorite guru and I guarantee you if you pick an offer and a niche based on what everybody else is telling you what to do, what your favorite guru is telling you what to do, you're not gonna be in business a year from now, and I guarantee that. So what is a blue ocean strategy? Well, a red ocean is basically a, just a shark infested ocean with a ton of people already doing the same thing that you're doing. And so they're biting off of each other, they're eating each other, and so there's blood everywhere. And so when you try to compete in that market, it's gonna be really, really hard for you, and you probably won't even make it because there's already so many people doing it. But a blue ocean is just the exact opposite. There's no one really doing it. There's no one really targeting that market or using that offer. And so you can just obtain all the clients in that market because there is no market for it. Like you created something brand new or just something that no one else is tapping into. It's like finding gold. So finding a blue ocean is great, but how do we do this? So every client that I have that does tremendously well, they have one or more of these three things. So it is unique offer, unique audience, unique channel. So if you're just starting out, in my opinion, honestly, you should just pick a niche that no one else is targeting. You will have much better results. You can be a terrible marketer, but if you pick a niche that no one else is really doing, then it becomes super easy for you. Because if you are wanting to go into solar, there are plenty of other companies already in solar and there's plenty of already beginners already in solar. And so it's gonna be really hard for you to stand out from the competition. And so why would someone choose you over anybody else? But if you go into, Animal control, right? That's, you know, where we pick up raccoons, right? If, if your raccoon is in your house, we'll come and get your raccoon. I don't know anybody else that's really doing that. So if you did that, you probably have a lot better chance of getting clients in that niche because no one else is already doing it. So again, if you're starting out, I would just pick it. Don't do e-com, don't do solar, don't do whatever the big word is like roofing, solar, all that. Just don't, right? Because everyone else is already doing it. And I promise you, you will have much better results if you just choose something that's unique. Now, let's say you already have a niche that you like and you're maybe an established agency. 
Uh, something else that you can do is just target a different country. A lot of people are targeting the US and the US as a whole is already saturated. I'll give you an example. I was on a call with a guy and he is, I believe, based in Sweden and he is a sales guy on a team of like 10 other sales guys. And he's in this office, he targets the US, every other guy targets a different country. So this guy next to him targets Germany, the guy next to him targets India, the guy next to him targets Australia, right? And so he has all these guys and he got way less sales than everybody else in that office just because he was targeting the US and everybody else was targeting another country. And so every other country was more open to their offer because they're not as saturated because nobody else is really targeting those other countries. And I was just targeting to another agency in the Malaysian market the other day and they are just starting out and they're not following any of the rules that I'm going to explain in this video, yet they were able to get pretty good results just by doing some basic outreach saying, hey, we'll help you build your business, right? They weren't differentiating themselves. They weren't creating a unique offer or anything like that. They were just targeting the Malaysian market saying, hey, we'll help you with your marketing. And they were able to get pretty good clients just because nobody else is, I don't know anybody else targeting the Malaysian market. So you can be terrible in a really good market and still win. Because if you think about it, if you had a hamburger stand or a hot dog stand, what would be the number one advantage that you could have, right? It could be the best hot dogs in town or the most addictive hot dogs in town. I don't know. But really the number one advantage that you want is a starving crowd. Because even if you have terrible, terrible hot dogs, people are going to eat them because they're starving. So if you're targeting the same niche that everybody else is targeting or you're targeting the U.S., like they have a buffet of options. They're not starving. They are constantly full. They have people reach. They're overstuffed, right? They're puking up, right? All these offers. That everyone's reaching out to them all the time. If you go to a market that doesn't have anyone in it and they are malnourished, right? <laughs> and nobody's targeting them, then you can easily just get a ton of sales calls in those markets. On the flip side, if you want to target an industry that's already saturated and you're maybe already established in that space, then what you can do is just change your offer to something that's way more compelling so that you're getting your audience's attention and you just don't look like everybody else. Here's an example. I had somebody that reached out to me the other day on Instagram and they said, hey, I love your YouTube videos. I just want to see if I could help you create your thumbnails. Now, there's nothing specific about his offer and it was just a commodity, just thumbnails, which I can get probably anywhere else. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't get clients from doing direct outreach, even if you have a bad offer, because even back in the day when they did door-to-door -door sales, they would sell vacuums door-to-door. -door. You could easily just go to the store and get a vacuum for probably cheaper. But just because someone was there, you felt more inclined to say yes because someone had a vacuum you know, in your front door right there. So uh, you can still get clients from doing direct outreach with a bad offer, but what would be even better is that if you had a better offer and they could only get it from you right there. And so if you had a vacuum and you said, hey, you can buy this vacuum from the store for $800, but you can buy it for $600 from me, but only today. And so that changes everything, right? So now I'm more compelled to respond right here, right now, rather than going anywhere else. Uh, where it's basically a commodity. Now let's go back to his offer. So if he said, I'll literally make 10 thumbnails for you for free, I'd be much more likely to respond to that. Or if he said, I'll, you'll only pay if the thumbnail performs better than normal, right? That's a completely different value proposition. Even though he's delivering the exact same thing, it's still a thumbnail that I can get anywhere else. Just because he said it in that way, position the offer in that way, I'm much more likely to respond. Another thing you can do is just change the channel or the media that you're using to get your clients. If you're using Upwork and you're using Fiverr and it's just not working for you, then just try Facebook outreach. I get on calls all the time where people are saying, I tried LinkedIn outreach for the last five years. It worked five years ago, but now it doesn't work anymore. Right? Well, it doesn't work anymore because the market's constantly changing. And so if people aren't on LinkedIn, they're not going to be responding to your messages. And so I would literally just try anything else that's different. If your audience is on like SMS or Google Calendar invites or PayPal or Twitter or anything, like just try those strategies as outreach strategies. Be more unique than the next guy. Everybody else is doing LinkedIn. Everybody else is doing cold email. And so if you're doing what everybody else is doing, how are you standing out from the competition? So if you reach out in a unique way, you'll probably get a ton more replies. You also just want to be where your audience's eyes are. So if your audience is on Instagram, start reaching out on Instagram and make content on Instagram. If your audience is on YouTube, make YouTube videos, right? That's the only reason I'm here right now today. <laughs> I personally don't really know a lot of people or almost anyone that spends more than 10 minutes on LinkedIn. I don't know anyone that spends more than 30 minutes a day just scrolling through their emails. Like, hmm, what's the next good offer? I want to look at all my marketing emails. Like nobody does that. So just be where your audience's eyes are, right? Attention equals money. Number three, your number one job is sales. The clients that I have that get the best results, honestly, they make their number one job every single day just doing more outreach, doing more things to get more clients. So when they are on sales calls, they're reaching out to prospects, they're making content, they're doing whatever they can to get more clients in the door. They're also a lot like me. They're always trying to find different ways of getting their audience's attention and get more conversations going. I used to do a lot of done for you. I would have clients, I would do their email and their LinkedIn and their SMS and all that stuff. I would get like 80 sales calls per client per month, which was great. 
The problem is, is that if I die, or let's say, you know, which I did at one point, I, I said, you know, I don't want to work with all my clients, done for you clients anymore. Then you, you no longer have 80 sales calls coming in. And so I have the clients that I used to work with that I would get 80 sales calls for per month. They're like, well, can you do it again? <laughs> right? And the, but I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to do it again. Uh, because what you need to do, what I want you to do is for you to own the system. And so you know how to do it. So you don't have to rely on me and my knowledge. You know how to do it yourself. And so I basically built now my offer is I built out the system for you so that you have everything that you need. And all you got to do is click play on automations and you will start getting appointments in the door through this system or that system. And you'll know how to use it so that at any point when you need more clients, you need more sales calls, you can just click play and more sales calls and clients are coming through and you know how to use it so that you don't have to rely on some other agency to do it for you. So that's kind of like all the clients that I have that get the best results. They do that, right? They own the system. They know how to use it they control the system as much as they can. Their number one job is trying to get more sales. And if you're just starting out, you probably sit all day thinking about what do I do next? And then you go watch another SMMA video. Here's the problem. Your number one job should be sales. And so if you don't know what to do, you should just be doing sales. Once you're really good at sales and you're doing that all day, then you'll get to a point where you don't have any time, right? you, you don't have time to do sales and you'll have too many clients. And so your job is to get to a point where you have too much sales. And so in order to get too much sales, you need to understand how to get sales. So make that your number one job. Number four, this is what nobody's telling you. Become the wizard. This is kind of how people work. They all want the one true path that they need in order to get the results that they want. They all want the one person that can tell them those results. They want the one strategy that can take them to the next level. That one strategy is this. You become the one true path. You become the one person people can plug into. You have the one true strategy. So in your prospect's eyes, your strategy is to convince them that you're the number one source, that you're the one true strategy, that you are the wizard in their eyes. You need to convince them that you know the most, that you have the most experience, and that your methods are like nobody else's methods. So here's an example. There is one strategy that I'm using that no one else is really using. It's getting me booked sales calls for $1 each, and they are high quality calls. And so we book around 300 calls a month and we're getting about a 50% close rate on a deal that's worth $10,000. Everyone else is using Facebook ads, everyone else is using Google search ads and they're very expensive and low quality. And so our method is Google display ads. No one else is really talking about this and it's incredibly high quality for a very, very low price. Now, I just made all that up, so don't go and try to do Google display ads, but that makes you inclined to be like, hmm, I wonder how that works. I, I'm kind of inclined to lean into it because, you know, He's telling me that this is the one true source. This is the one true strategy. And uh, I want to kind of feed into that. So people love certainty. People love when you feel like you have full conviction on something. And when you have full conviction, they just, no one has full conviction for themselves. I guarantee that. Like we're all thinking about, oh, I wonder, I wonder if that actually works, right? I wonder if I should plug into him because he seems like he knows what he's talking about. So when you're becoming the wizard, you want to be specific and you want to stand for something. And so it needs to be different than what everybody else in the same audience is telling them. So I say you shouldn't even really be doing cold emails because cold emails is very expensive and you get a low return. On average, you're getting about a 1% reply rate on your cold email campaigns. At max, these gurus are getting maybe 10% reply rate, max, okay? I get about a 20% reply rate on Facebook messages, a 40% reply rate on SMS messages, and that's not on a bad day, right? That's that's average, okay? And so I say, hey, look, those aren't the strategies you should be doing. You shouldn't be using cold email because I'm getting a much better response rate, much better reply rate, much higher booked call rate, much higher close rate on the calls that I am getting through these strategies, right? I give you specifics, I give you numbers, I give you what you wanna know. And I say it's different than what everybody else is telling you because I'm the one true wizard, I'm the one you should be following, and everybody else is wrong. So for you, your strategy is to become the number one guru for that person. And so you need to make content for your audience wherever their eyes are, wherever their attention is, and just convince them that you're the one true source. So a good quote for this is, everyone's walking around with their umbilical cord trying to find the next person to plug it into. Everyone's looking for that one true source. Everyone's looking for the one true strategy, the one true wizard. And so you just want to be that person for them. Have you ever had a friend that told you one thing and did another thing? <laughs> That's what every guru in this space is doing right now. They're saying, hey, go do emailing, go do cold calling. But you should look at the macro of what that guru is actually doing. Because what they're actually doing is that they're selling you on the strategy that you should be using by making content saying, hey, this is what you should be doing. Come opt into my funnel. Then you opt into their funnel and then they get your email and then they upsell you into something else, right? That's what they're actually doing on the macro. That's what they're actually doing. But what the, what you see is the micro of what, hey, this is the strategy that you should be doing, right? And so they're selling you one thing, but they're actually doing a different thing. So even me, like I, I actually do Google Calendar invites. I actually do Facebook outreach. I do all that stuff, right? I wouldn't tell you it if I didn't actually do it, but really, 
I get maybe a call per day from Facebook outreach. I get five to seven calls per week through Google Calendar invites outreach, right? All these random strategies I do, I do test them, I do use them. But I get about five to 10 calls per video that I post. And so if I'm posting three videos a week, I'm getting 15 to 30 sales calls just from inbound strategies, just from my YouTube, okay? Five calls versus 30 calls, right? What am I, what am I doing versus what am I saying, right? I'm saying, hey, you should do Facebook outreach, which you should if you're starting out. But what am I actually doing? I'm making you this video right now. And eventually 10 of you are gonna probably click through and you're gonna book a call with me, which if you did, that'd be great. But so if you look at the macro, <laughs> I'm doing the same thing that every other guru is doing. And so you kind of want to position yourself as that guy. You want to position yourself as me or, or as the guru. Like I'm the one true source. That should be your strategy moving forward into getting 100 clients over the next year. All right, number five, last and final point. This one's a good one. Target people that are already buying the stuff. So let's say that you're a young girl in a relationship. Now let's say that you get in an argument with your one true love and he hits you across the face. Now you love him and he said he would never hit you again. What do you think the odds are that he's actually going to hit you again? 92%. It is 92%. The odds of him hitting you again is 92% after the first time. Now we've all done something like that. Not, I'm not saying you've hit woman, all right? We, no, we all haven't done that. We've all done something where we said one thing and then we did another, right? Where I said, hey, I'm not gonna eat any more fried mayonnaise balls. And then one night I was sleepwalking, I walked over into a deep fryer and I put in some creamy white goodness into that caramel hot tub. Now I hate mayonnaise, but uh, that's something that we've all kind of done where we said, hey, I'm not gonna do this anymore, but we still consistently did it. 80% of our daily life is literally what we just did the day before. And so 80% of our lives is just consistent habits that we've already done. And so it's really hard to get somebody to change. So in our case, if we're trying to get someone to buy our services, getting someone to buy their first make money online course is pretty hard. But once they buy one, it's gonna be a lot easier for them to buy another. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably already bought a few courses in the past. Like you're, this isn't gonna be your first SMA, SMMA video that you've ever watched. You've probably already watched a ton of other SMMA videos and you're who I wanna target because you are already deep into the hole. And so you don't wanna target people that are brand new, like, hey, how to start your, how to make money online fast, right? You know, that's a much broader market, but trying to get those to convert is much, much harder. I probably spent over $25,000 in courses and coaching, which isn't a bad thing because every time I do, I get closer to my goals. But if I were you, I would target someone like me who's already invested a lot into uh, this space, right? A lot of time and money already into this rather than trying to convince someone brand new to invest for the first time. So I've got a friend named Mitch Wiggins and he has a coaching offer and in his videos, he'll literally say, I know you've probably invested into four or five other programs before and so you're skeptical that this won't work for you. So he's leaning into this. He's embracing the fact that he's trying to target people that have already been around the block. So again, it would be easier to target someone like me who's already invested tens of thousands into this space, right? Or whatever space that you're targeting. And so it's be, it'd be easy to get them to invest another thousand, another 5,000, another 10,000. Right, but it'd be much harder to try to get someone that's brand new to invest their first 10,000 into something. Anyways, just a recap. Number one, sell it first and then fulfill. Number two, blue ocean strategy. Make your business and unique in some way so that you can gain traction faster. Number three, your job should always be sales. If you don't know what to do, always be doing sales. Your number one job should always be marketing. Number four, become the wizard in your prospect's eyes. Number five, target people that are already buying this stuff. I tried to give you as much as I could in this video, so could you do Carson a favor and just leave a like because if you made it this far, I'm sure you got something out of it, so please, Please, for me, if you leave a like, I'll send you some fried mayonnaise balls, I promise. And if you made it this far, let's just confuse everybody else in the comments by just naming just a random a random fake fact about whales, okay? If you put a random fake fact about whales so that everybody else that looks in the comments can be like, what in the world? Why is everyone talking about whales? Uh, anyways, thank you for watching. I'll chat soon.